Hello everybody. Welcome to the Python course. Now, in this part of this lecture, we will cover module 15 that is Python Advanced. In this part, we will see basic introduction to OpenCV library. How we, we can work with your images and process your images and videos. Right? For that, first you need to understand the computer vision concept. Let's start. So before starting into the computer vision topic, so I would like to ask you a question. So have you ever wondered how the phone unlocks with your face in just a few seconds, right? So this can be answered with the help of the OpenCV, right? So OpenCV is particularly a library in Python, which can help us understanding how applications like photo editor and smartphones camera work under the hood right so basically you have your mobile device and your mobile device scans the facial expression or some features of your face and matches with your already stored facial expressions or facial features and if this match is true, then and only then your uh, smartphone opens up, right? So this will study more about the OpenCV and computer vision. Okay. So let us glance at the topics we will discuss in this Python OpenCV tutorial. First, we'll cover the introduction part. Then we'll see the history, the prerequisites. What are the prerequisites you need for this OpenCV? What is computer vision? What are the advantages? Real life application. We'll also see the case study and future and scope. So what is computer vision? So computer vision is an interdisciplinary field of artificial intelligence. So with the uh, computers and other high uh, level computing devices, right? So it gives the high level understanding from both digital images and videos, right? So from this computer vision, we could acquire, we could process and analyze the digital images, right? So basically we have a digital image and we wanted to process that digital image. We wanted to find some relevant information from that image, right? So that is basically our computer vision is right. We wanted to interpret that image image. Okay. So this is the image or a video. You can say that. So there are differentiate differentiation uh, done between the human perception and a computer perception. So first let us understand the human perception. We have the image or a video which the human eye sees it right after seeing or sensing this image so there are neurons which are present in our veins which get activated right so which sends sensory information right and perceive that this image consists of some kind of object so whether it contains a garden spring bridge water trees pond right fishes etc right so this is how a human flow works in the case of a image or a video so first the image uh, first the uh, human sees that image or sense that image then some kind of neurons is been triggered in our brain we send some uh, sensory information right and then after uh, sending this sensory information it gets into the interpretation right that what we have perceived in a similar fashion how computers sees this object or an image we have an optical device right which takes this image or a video and this image is being converted into a binary or a digital image in the in the format of your of your uh, numbers you can say that because computers only understand the language of zeros and ones so digital image uh, this image has been converted into digital image 
and which is being feed into a computer and then based on some kind of computations done onto that image it makes the interpretations right so it makes that in this image some kind of object is present so maybe a garden is present a spring is present so basically it does the object detection part via a computer or a by a system right for that we need to have a high computing devices right if the image contain lot many of features we need high computing devices because that computations we need to make right so this is how we can differentiate between a human sensory perception and a computer sensory perception so that is what is known as computer vision the vision or the perception which is been seen by a computer or being percepted by a computer that is known as computer vision right okay so now we'll differentiate between all the various terms so how computer vision is related to this field so as i already said that computer vision is a subset of artificial intelligence so in the artificial intelligence there also exist a topic of machine learning right there in the machine learning we have a deep learning also right in the deep learning there's a complex network of neurons that is artificial neural networks in this part we have a subset of computer vision which deals with computer graphic mathematics physics sensor technology signal processing and image processing so computer vision is wholly divided into these six major areas right so basically we can say that computer vision is a subset of artificial intelligence right and if we need to something see it or visualize it or we can have a image that is a digital image so that part computer vision has to come into picture then how computer vision is related to so its application basically we are talking about so it has in as i already told you so it can be controlled by a robotics robotic vision so we could install a camera inside a, a robotic arm and there he used to sense the surroundings and then on the basis of the surroundings he could make some decisions right signal processing then physics optical physics you can say that imaging smart cameras as i already given you example of how the phone unlocks right in the neurobiology so we have the large data of the patients which are suffering from some kind of cancer and analyzing those cancer patients data that the x-ray images of that patients we could come up with the perception that uh, if the trend follows or the uh, uh, or some uh, features are pertaining to one uh, one class then we can say that these patients are likely to have cancer right and in the case of mathematics in the case of machine learning and artificial intelligence you can say that computer vision is partly related to the machine learning and image processing right okay okay so how computer vision or an image is being percepted by a computer so let's analyze this so in the previous lecture we have studied about the numpy arrays so this is what we see a image in the left hand side you can see that image of an a model right so this is the famous lina model image which i have shown you right so this is how humans perceive this image but what computer sees this is a bunch of numbers a bunch of array right a three dimensional array you can say that right so it you can say that it has having a specific shape of 512 cross 512 and it has having three channels r g and b red green and blue right you can also visualize this image as a two color image which has having the shades of gray right so that we ca call as a gray image gray scale image right which is having a a 2d matrix or a 2d array right so this image could be represented in the form of a numpy array so you can see that so its type is unsigned integer 8 so it's an 8 bit image and we have some kind of numbers 
in this digital image and this numbers represents the intensity right for example here we have 255 right 138 and 128 so this is r g and b right and the ranging from intensity values range from 0 to 225 255 sorry right because it's an 8 bit image right this will elaborate and this will study further in detail in the next tutorial right so for now you can understand that how human see this image and how computer see this image computer see is sees this image in the form of a numpy array and this data type is of unsigned integer 8 because it's an 8 bit image and its shape is consist of three channel because it's a rgb channel and three colored image right and if you multiply all these figures you get a bytes so how many storage capacity it does hold right okay so now we come across the digital image processing right the processing of the digital image uh, consist of several uh, workflows right several topics we need to undergo right so let us try to understand that workflow in detail right so how this process is being done firstly we have a problem statement right we need to uh, solve this problem statement for that problem statement we need to gather or acquire that kind of data so data could be in the form of a uh, images so that data could come from various sources that could be a satellite image in which we wanted to find uh, the objects or object detection in the satellite images we wanted to find the soil moisture or you can say that we wanted to find the terrain right so so this we have a problem statement in which we need to find some kind of analysis or find some kind of object in that part for that we need to acquire that image so the image acquisition could be done from various sources from the satellite images you can have that image right and you can have your images from captured from your mobile phone or a camera device right so there are various sources in which you can acquire that image right okay so the next part is your image enhancements right for example in this part you can see that here is a on the left hand side there was a image which is being captured from a satellite image and you can see that the image is is contrast is very low right so it is kind of brightness values are very large so we need to set the contrast to the optimal level so that we could detect clearly the objects in that image so that we need to know the image enhancement techniques so there are various kinds of image enhancement techniques in which you could fiddle with your contrast values or the pixel intensity values so that it can brighter or uh, or it can uh, give the intensity color sharper right in that part right so that you can do it right so next process is that you acquire that image and then you try to uh, make the image brighter or or in the correct format so that it could be visible then there is a image restoration right now you can see that in this part of the image some lines are gradually appearing so this there is some kind of a noise in this image right so there are noise removal methods in which you can apply to that image and make the image noise free so there is blurring so gaussian blur right so can any edge detection so basically there are some kind of pre processing you need to do in order to remove remove the noise so that part involves image restoration right then we have the morphological operations in the morphological operations you first try to uh detect the edges or corners and then you do some erosion or dilation of that image basically it is basically done to remove the noise right and also sharpen the images right now you can see that the edges has been clearly been detected right and noise has been removed right so that why it has been 
uh, apply some morphological operation so that you can get a better view of that image right after that you do a segmentation in the segmentation part what you do you try to classify the different objects right in this image for example you can see that in this image there are houses there is streets and there are greenery right so this has been classified into different classes right so now we can clearly detect the what kind of objects we are trying to have on the basis of that we have the object detection right so we can segment it and then detect the object in this particular image right then we have representation and description right in this we wanted to find the points which are matching right so we wanted to make the exact figure or we wanted to find the two images which are exactly similar or not and also we wanted to uh, make the image do different images stitch to one image so that kind of representation and description you wanted to do you wanted to combine that image right okay then we have the image compression methods in which we apply some compression techniques in which the size of the image is being compressed without losing their data right then we process the color images so actually a color image consists of three channels r g and b right in some cases your red channel is not visible in case of your satellite data then we have to mock that red color so mixing of these colors gives you the exact picture or what humans perceive right so if you have the images you combine the dif different channels and then you try to make a figure so this is how the whole process of digital image processing works in which we have various topics and in each topic we have some definite uh, fields in which how you can enhance the quality brightness and your noise removal and uh, and your erosion uh, dilation techniques in which you can enhance the quality and uh, of the image right okay now to do all these operations we need some kind of a library so python has provided us this library so the prerequisite of this library is that you need to first get familiar with your python language because this library works with the python as well as your c++ also right it is all originally written in c++ and on the top of that it has given us the python wrapper in which we could do that part right so the prerequisite that you need to well versed with python or c++ and then the second part is that you need to understand your numpy array right so these are the prerequisite so these this is a library for computer vision that includes numerous highly optimized algorithms that are used in computer vision tasks so the workflow which i have shown you earlier all these methods can be done using your open cv library right so open cv is supported across all the platforms including windows linux and mac os and is available in multiple languages such as c c++ java and python and it is cross platform also right so originally this project was initiated by gary bradsky at the intel research center in 1999 so it was a summer vision uh, college project right so it was researched in intel research center and later on it was acquired by a company right so the main op main aim was to build a highly optimized and efficient library for computer vision right okay now you can see that every image tell us a story in this image you can see there are different objects so i could i could see millions of features in this single image so you can have the object you can have the activities you can have the scenes location text facial gestures motions right people people are there people sitting on a ride umbrella 
carousel tree so lot many things are there which tell us uh, many many things in this image right so in this image so we wanted to identify the exact features so we want to identify specific features in this image right so that can be done by using open cv techniques so now the question arises why to study computer vision so what are the applications and the real life situations in which why this computer vision has gained lot many a lot many popularity in this in this era right so first of all it works with your security surveillance you can see your cctv cameras has been installed at each and every places whether you take it to your metros whether in your suburbs or whether in your road sides right so and the constant feed is we are getting through your cctv cameras so this feed could be on analyzed and could predict something it is used to detect some kind of a object detection or a human detection we can detect the motions right we can detect how many objects were there some intrusion act activity we can detect how many number of people were there at my doorstep at that particular time right so it could detect that people and could raise the alarm if some unusual activity is being happening at so and so time and we could get alarm so this kind of applications could be a life saving applications we can say that right in case of medical and scientific imaging also this has worked tremendously you can see that the these are some of the x ray patients of some covid 19 patients covid 19 right so by analyzing this x rays of some patients so we could detect whether this patient is likely to have a covid 19 or not right so without any human intervention it could easily detect detect the uh, disease also in case of your blood samples analyzing the molecular biology it also work perfectly fine right so in in case of your labs your medical science right so by analyzing your blood samples your microbes so it has also given us significant uh, performance and also your imaging data right to find the trends to find the unusual activity to find the uh, soil movements or water capacity or water level so that can be analyzed by using computer vision techniques right so another application of open cv is your face detection so it could easily identify how many humans are in this picture how many persons are detected how many persons entering into a mall how many enter uh, persons entering into your uh, station right so these can be installed and can be applied into your uh, crowded places right also you have the motion tracking part right if some unusual activity occurs right so that could be raised alarm and then triggered then we have the image segmentation in which we divide this image into different number of classes here you can see that the cars has been classified separately humans have been separate classified as separate one this train has been separate uh, separated as another thing and the sky the the traffic signals the road right the path the footpath right so this way you can easily segregate your objects so this after that you can easily detect what kind of object as is being needed or you need to classify it right then you have the autonomous driving vehicles right google used this technology in which is which it installed a camera at the top of the car which sends the images and then on based of that images it could detect something it could detect an object and then on the basis of that it could take some decisions so it's a mixed combina combination of computer vision artificial intelligence machine learning right robotics so all this come into a picture so it is a complete package of artificial intelligence you can say that right then smart cars right so this is a similar example of an auto autonomous vehicle right then we have the optical character recognition right you can have the number plate detection to it 
right so it could easily detect what kind of numbers have been printed on a mailbox or on a number plate license plate right your sign boards so that could be that could come up with the various applications so first you need to analyze that image and on the top of that you will want to detect something out of that image right or to classify that that image that what image is present or object is present in that image right so then you have vision based biometrics also so this is the story where the how the famous uh, how the afghan girl, afghan girl was identified by its iris patterns iris patterns right so this is also a similar interest field in which you could detect like you can match the iris patterns and try to identify whether this person was the same right and there are so many applications in which open cv has evolved whether you say it augmented reality street viewing image stitching right human computer interaction object identification and mobile robotics right stereo stereo pieces uh, stereo vision depth perception from two cameras right and so on so now in the future also this has gained popularity and a uh, lot many research uh, papers have been released in this topic right so i urge you to start uh, going through this topics because because the future is 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 artificial intelligence and machine learning right okay so in the next lecture we will continue this and uh, i will try to uh, give you hands on working with the, the open cv part how we can install the open cv and then start working with your images right okay for till now stay tuned for my next video thank you thanks for watching